Cameron talked about mitigation here tonight, and uh, the flight that I'm actually going to tell you about, it, talk to you about, is how I went through mitigation to actually do the complete flight. Now, um, I started with, we talked about two bags, one with experience, I didn't have much in it, but when I was, uh, my first started flying, my dad had a 150, so I put a few bits of experience in my bag straight away with dad. Once again, flying training, I had the luxury of having people with a lot of hours, grade one instructors to start my instructing and to do my training. Once again, from those guys, I put a lot more and more experience in my bag. And then I got my first job up in the Pilbara. Sort of semi, I didn't count it in the wet season, but that was semi wet season up there when I was up there. So a little bit in my bag again about wet seasons. And then uh, the next time, got an instrument rating. A couple more bits in my bag. It's all good. Headed up to Darwin in the mid 90s. Started flying up here, coming to my first wet season. I was lucky enough to get up here in, uh, it was about Easter time. So I had a whole year to get used to the aircraft I was flying, ATC, and all the places I was going. Half them I couldn't pronounce their names, as you know. <laughs> so then I worked for a charter company up here, got enough experience on Conquest, and went back to the RFDS. RFDS was a great training ground for me. And they kept on everything I did there with the chief pilot, training captains, all the ICAs I did, kept on filling my bag up, just kept on going and going and going. So I did ten and a half years there, me. Up here with Pearl, when I was up here, so I started my check and training. Once again, from all that experience, kept on putting stuff in my bag. Came over to the police in, 90, in uh, 2009. We had a uh, guy doing a check and training, Peter Tippett, you might know, he's pretty well Mr. Pilatus from the world. Filled my bag up more. So I was very lucky, I had a good constant stuff throwing in my bag for this. So the flight that I'm going to talk to you about is mitigation. How I got through this flight. It was in uh, February 2011. It was just after Cyclone Carlos. It had just been through about three, four days beforehand. It was only a cyclone, it was only just a one. And it started over Daly River, back around to the west, back over Darwin, then it headed down the Kimberley and down the west coast of WA. Left a fair bit of weather here. Usually cyclones drain a fair bit of the weather away. But it left a lot of weather here. So I come out to work. We actually be back the planes away, down to Catherine on the Wednesday, and we brought them back over the weekend. One of the aircraft was US on the Monday. We all rocked up to work. We had two flights going. I got out, darted my plane, 7 o'clock sign on. But the other plane was US, so we actually had to use my plane first up, so that's OK. I'll wait. So the other guy went out, flew out, come back again. I was meant to be airborne again by about 11.30. Obviously, like things happen, things got pushed back, just a little bit more time, refueling, and it wasn't until 12.30 I departed. Now this flight was going to be seven sectors in the afternoon. So it was going from Darwin to Tyndall, Tyndall to Noomawa, Noomawa to Lake Adela, Elko Island, Melangambi, Man and greeted back to Darwin. So that's a fairly big day. And half of it's already all gone. But I'd had rest, I was in at work, and I looked at, okay, this is gonna be doable still. So this is where I had to start to reach into my bag of mitigation. Go through there, what's happening? I've had good rest, yes. Had lunch. I had a plane full of fuel because we could take full fuel on the NG, and three people. We're taking officers back because they've been stuck in Darwin because of the weather, so we couldn't fly them to the North Pass. They had people everywhere, 
and we're just delivering people back into the community because they're the police members. So it's fairly important to get these people back on the ground. So uneventful, we'll go to down to Tyndall, pick up another three members, so it's six people on board now, and we head out to Noongawa. When I was heading into Noongawa, most of this time we're in cloud actually, because of just the weather, it was just wet season, so we broke out the cloud about 10,000 feet, going into Noongawa, it's not a problem, visual approach into there. And when I was coming to land on one five, Towards the east, there was a fairly big thunderstorm there, probably about 10 miles away. We landed, not much time to actually offload our passenger that was there. There was only one getting off, a bit of gear, and by this time, the thunderstorm had pretty well developed in a matter of uh, five minutes to move close to us, which was probably too close for us to actually take off then, which I decided i wait on the ground. So I waited on the ground for an hour. So once again, pushed that time away. So I'm biting into my day again. After an hour, thunderstorm had uh, run its course and I'd head up to Lake Abella. 25 minutes up there. We could hear people going into Lake Abella. It's all okay. But on the plane, radar, storm scope, there was a mass of a couple of thunderstorms to the north, from the west around to the north, and all around to the east at Lake Avella. Not a problem. There's VFR planes going in there, and it's virtually a isolated thunderstorm area there. So I land. We go backtrack down the runway. That's fine. Park up get out of the aircraft, it starts raining. The thunderstorms have moved from the north to us. There was lightning down south of us, to the east, south, north, west, every which way you want to go. So once again, mitigation, what I'm going to do? I've got to work out, I've got still another four sectors to go. It's not going to get back into town now, into Darwin, until late in the evening. So then, my thinking was, well, we might as well close the plane, stop all the water running in it at this stage, and we'll go down, have a cup of tea, wait for it to blow over. Not knowing at that time that it was probably going to be a supercell thunderstorm to stick around. So what I did was had points of working out the mitigation of when I'm actually going to take off. The latest time that I'm going to Lake, from Lake Avila to Elko and complete flying. And that was starting to get there now, it's starting to get to the 5.30, which I calculated. Still raining, still thunderstorms, still lightning everywhere. So I had to have a lot of plans planned. I'm up to plan like uh, C now. Well, I'm not gonna go over to Lake Abella. Maybe I could go to Manigrita on the way home if I leave a little bit later. Once again, that came on. That time went, what am I going to do now? Oh well, I'll wait till 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock was when I was going to go straight back to Darwin. I had guys on board, I had still five people to deliver around. They were needed in the police station, they were needed back there. They'd been absent for a good week because of the cyclone. So once again, talking about pressures that uh, put on us to go. But there wasn't one there because it's come to seven o'clock. I'm staying. I'm staying at Lake Abella. I'm not going out. I'm not leaving, not taking off. Previously to that flight, three weeks beforehand, our aircraft, our aircraft was struck by lightning. So I'm very aware that plane's actually been struck by lightning three times now. <laughs> so it's a big, big cost, big time and sitting on the ground at Lake Avella for it fixed to be a long, long time. So we decided to stay. We stayed the night. I had our clothes what we put in. The other guys were there too. 
but we're all glad that we stayed that night because that thunderstorm didn't give up until 11 o'clock that night. It was overhead for a good five, six hours. So next day, what did we do? We got new weather, and I'll continue on my flight that I did had planned from the day before. Everything was fine. I ended up getting back in at 12 o'clock the next day. So I looked at my mitigations, what I did. So I made that decision. Each time I had a decision, everything was going south all the time. So I pull it back, make the decision go south, change my timings. I was lucky I had a lot of fuel, and I had people that were understanding that wasn't quite right to fly in that weather. So that's my story.